Hey everyone, how's it going? Forrest here again with another installment of my complete analysis of all of JS Box Corral harmonizations. Today we're looking at Du Fleet of Hust, Herr Jesu Christ, which translates to You Prince of Peace, Lord Jesus Christ. And this is a pretty straightforward corral, not too much to say about it. Um, we're just going to hop right into the analysis. So three sharps in the key signature. We start on A, we end on A, so I reckon we're in the key of A major. And we have a couple of passing tones to start things off in the upper voices. We then have D, E, F sharp, and A. This D is a 7, 6 suspension over the bass. And we have a D major chord as a result. That's our 4. That's our subdominant. We then have B, D, F sharp, and B. And in the past, we might have been tempted to call this a 2 chord, but I think this is kind of like an inverted suspension. I think there's a name for that. I'm going to have to look that up, but we have G sharp, B, and D, which I think is a more likely chord to come after four. You know, two comes after chord, in co uh, after chord, after four in some cadential situations, but I think in the middle of a progression, one, four, seven, six, going to one would be our likely progression that we would expect to happen here, and the fact that the notes are there is, uh, is telling. Uh, but that being said, uh, we have not one on the next beat. We have F sharp minor, F sharp, C sharp, A, and C sharp, which is our six chord. So this is a deceptive progression with a passing tone in the melody before we get C sharp, C sharp, G, and E, which is uh, C sharp minor. That is our three chord. Kind of an interesting chord to have happen after a six chord because we would expect... Uh, like two to come afterwards, but this is an example of what I've been calling a transitive progression. So a transitive progression being against the grain of the cycle of falling fifths, like a chord is most likely to fall down a fifth. Uh, that's the that's the place the chord wants to resolve to the most, uh, just the nature of uh, how tonality came to be. But afterwards we get F sharp, B, A, and D. Um, we could call this a B minor 7 chord in second inversion, uh, so a 2 4 3 chord, but I think I'm going to call it a D major chord in first inversion, F sharp, A, A, and D. Uh, they're basically achieving the same thing. It's just, uh, some. I think 2 4 3 chords are more so just a byproduct of this accent and non chord tone. This is just my relationship with the chords and how I've analyzed them so far, but I think both analyses are accurate and uh, justifiable. And as we're getting ready for our imperfect authentic cadence, we have G sharp, E, D, a uh, B and D rather. That's E7 over G sharp. That's a 5 6 chord. It's our first dominant we've seen. And then we have A major, A, E, A, and C sharp. And this is an imperfect authentic because the melody does not have the tonic. Okay, looking ahead, we have another imperfect authentic cadence. Very interesting structure here. Imperfect authentic cadence going to another imperfect authentic cadence. All right, we have G sharp, B, E, and E. It's a 5 6 chord that's E major over G sharp. Passing tone in the tenor before we get F sharp, D, F sharp, and B. And I think think what this is most likely is a G sharp diminished chord of some sort. Actually, is it a G sharp diminished chord of some sort? Uh, we have D sharp, sorry, D natural, D natural, F sharp, and T. Apologies. I think this D, uh, this this G sharp rather is a passing tone, and this is actually just a 4-6 chord, a fifthless 4-6 chord. Then we have E, E, A, and C sharp. That is a tonic triad in second inversion. And as we're closing in on the cadence, this is where we would expect and in interrupting the resolution to the five chord. We get D, F sharp, A, and B. That's B minor seven over D. That's our two, six, five chord. Bach loves two, six, five chords. Then we have E major, E, E, G sharp, and B. That's our five chord. We can draw a bracket under all of these actually because this chord right here, this two, six, five really is just, it's like a, basically a neighbor tone chord, or we have a couple of anticipations. It's interesting. We have a neighbor tone going down in the bass and a neighbor tone going up in the tenor. Then we have the same note repeated twice on the first two beats here and the same note repeated twice on the second two beats here. I think it's interesting that there's like symmetry between the two voices or the two groups of voices. And of course we cadence on one, A major, A, E, A, and C sharp. 
Okay, here is our first, I think, real point of convent, uh, contention, not convention, contention. Uh, this phrase ends in a half cadence, and how are we going to call this modulation? We start things off with a B7 chord over D sharp. We know that this is a 5, 6, 5 chord, but is this a direct modulation or is this a common chord modulation? You could analyze this as a common chord modulation if you just put the bracket underneath here say that we're going to the key of E major, and we can call this a four chord. But this to me sounds more like a direct modulation. Um, this doesn't, maybe it's just the way that the voices are spelled. Uh, it just feels like even though this chord is common between the two keys, it does not feel like it is flowing between the two. Uh, it does not feel like it's flowing between the two keys like it would mid phrase. Uh, we are gonna see a common chord modulation uh, we're going to see two of them actually later on. So to me, this sounds like a direct modulation. That's just me using my ear. But I think you could also analyze this as a common chord modulation as well. Um, then we go to E major, E, E, G sharp, and B, which is a five chord. And if you're looking ahead, you might see that this is not a half cadence in the key of E major, but rather a half cadence in the key of, uh, sorry, this is not a five chord. This is a tonic triad. This is E major is a half cadence in the key of F sharp minor. So we're looking for a point on which we modulate to F sharp minor. Passing tone in the bass, passing tone in the alto before we get G sharp, E, B, and B, which is a tonic triad in first inversion. That then gets turned back into root position on beat two and. And then we go to A, E, B, and C sharp. This B being a 9-8 suspension over the bass, so we know that a four chord is being implied here. But as the resolution happens, we fall to the seventh of the chord, so we get G-sharp, E, A, and C-sharp. So we could call this a four, maybe a four, four, two chord. I don't think that's super likely, um, but regardless, we could put it in there. I'll put it in parentheses just in case, because I think both analyses are correct. Uh, they're both implying the same thing, and the seventh of the chord does resolve down by step, so at least it's functioning the way that we expect it to. Uh, but this is where I think we modulate to the key of F sharp minor via the mediant. Um, you could say that we modulate as early as the E major chord. The E major chord could be our seven, and then seven goes to three, which makes sense, right? That's a normative chord progression. That's where we would expect the chord to go. But in this case, I think the modulation happens a little bit closer to the E sharp here. Uh, but I think, like I said, both analyses are correct. It just depends on how you hear it and how you present the analysis. So I think it's really cool that different people can arrive at different um, solutions and everyone can be correct, which is cool. All right, then we go to F sharp D, A, and B. Uh, we have another sort of situation here where we have this chord that kind of happens on the offbeat as well. Uh, but regardless, this is a D major triad, or sorry, a B minor 7 triad in second inversion. Second time we've seen that chord, actually, we've seen it here. Actually spelled the exact same, no, not the exact same way. Almost the exact same way if the tenor and the melody were switched. But this is definitely a 4-4-3 four, four, chord. And on the offbeat, we have a neighbor tone and a passing tone, one in the bass and one in the uh, alto, respectively. And that spells a, 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 the E sharp diminished root position, fully set, fully diminished seventh actually, E sharp, D, G sharp, and B. So four going to seven, that's a normative progression. I would say that that is a subdivision of the harmonic rhythm. And we would expect this to go to our tonic triad, F sharp, C sharp, F sharp, and A, which is our tonic triad. We have neighbor tones in the upper voices before we get B sharp, D sharp, F sharp, and A. This is a secondary leading tone chord. This is seven fully diminished, seven of five, because B sharp is the leading tone to C sharp, and C sharp is our five, so it makes sense in this half cadence that, you know, B sharp diminished is a substitute for four, which would otherwise be B minor, um, and we cadence on five, C sharp, C sharp, G sharp, E sharp, remember, and C sharp. Our final phrase ends in a perfect authentic cadence in the key of A major, so we're looking for a point in which we modulate, and with E naturals in the not too distant future, I think we modulate pretty quickly. So we go from C sharp major, C sharp, C sharp, E sharp, and G to F sharp minor, F sharp, C sharp, F sharp, and A, which is our tonic in the key of F sharp minor. 
but it's also our submediant in the key of A major. That goes to G sharp, B, E natural, and B, which is E major over G sharp. That's a 5-6 chord. Passing tone in the alto before we get A, A, C sharp, and C sharp, which is our tonic triad and root position, spelled somewhat unusually. I mean, the more that we see it, it's not super unusual, but uh, two roots and two thirds is still kind of an uncommon spelling in the grand scheme of things. We usually see com fully voiced triads before we see incomplete triads, especially ones that don't triple the root. And we have a passing tone in the alto as well, if I had neglected to mention that. We have G sharp, B, E, and B, again with another 5-6 chord that's E over G sharp. Passing tone in the melody before we get F sharp, A, A, and D. That's D major over F sharp, that's another 4-6 chord. We've seen this progression of 5 going to 4-6 before in the past, I think, so it's interesting that we're seeing it again, especially as we're nearing the end of a section, just like as we were here. Um, and then we have some passing tones in the inner voices. We have a G sharp, B, D, and F sharp, which is um, G sharp minor 7 flat 5 over F sharp, which would be like a 7, 4, 2 chord. Um, it's half diminished, so let's put the diameter symbol there. Um, yeah, really what matters is that you see that there's a 7 chord happening here and the other voices support it. Um, it's not super important that the inversion is occurring here because it's happening over a pedal tone and it's the other voices that sort of change the context, but I put the inversion in there because the bass, I don't know, it does play a little bit of a role, right? You know, there's a reason why there's an F in the bass here. Okay, moving ahead, we have E, C sharp, A, and C sharp, that's A over, sorry, E, a, a, C sharp, A, and C sharp, so that's A over E. That's a 1-6-4 chord, second inversion. This D is a neighbor tone, this B is an anticipation, but this A is a chord tone, so we don't need to mark it. And then we get E, E, A, and B. This A is a 4-3 suspension over the bass, but we know that 5 is being implied. The G sharp happens on the next beat. The 7th is delayed, it's a passing tone here in the tenor. And then we cadence on A major. A, C sharp, E, and A. Perfect authentic cadence. Oh, and let me go ahead and put a bracket here for those of you who have used a textbook that used that bracket. That's today's analysis. Um, pretty straightforward corral on the easier side to analyze, which is nice because I have had a very busy day up until this point, so it's good to have one that's pretty straightforward. Not too many harmonic uh, deviations from what I'm typically expecting, but I'm going to find, I, I imagine that I'm going to find that they are less and less common as I analyze the chorales, because Bach definitely has his procedures and his uh, his patterns that he reverts to in certain configurations, because what I'm finding is that a lot of these melodies are actually the same as well. They have a lot of the same contours and patterns, uh, so uh, yeah, using particular harmonic structures to traverse the, the melody and to get from point A to point B and frame a cadence is, uh, you know, somewhat limited in the chords that you use, but he really uh, puts his maker's mark on it through the counterpoint, uh, the passing tones and the the neighbor tones and the suspensions and whatnot. But this, this crawl is pretty straightforward, um, not too many tricks and turns. But I think we're going to cap the video off with that. Thank you so much for watching uh, and supporting the channel by doing so. Um, if you're interested in following me along on this journey to analyze all of the crowd harmonizations, feel free to subscribe and hit the notification icon. I upload once a day, so if you want your daily dose of analysis, or more specifically, your daily dose of Bach, uh, yeah, feel, consider subscribing, consider engaging in the comments section, consider hitting the notification icon. But I upload once a day, and uh, you can count on me to do that. All right, thank you again so much for watching the video. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. I look forward to tomorrow's analysis, and I hope you take care.